Hello everyone, Media and Crime Week 2. Uh, what we're going to learn is how do the media cause crime through this idea of moral panic? Uh, how does the public perception of crime actually change as a result of the media Im impact and information and the impact on social policies as a result? I'm going to first of all look at media and label it a little bit. We did label in a few weeks back, um, but this idea that the media have a major impact on helping moral entrepreneurs make changes for their benefit. So what will happen is there will be some disapproval from these moral entrepreneurs who are normally the police or uh, judges or religious people, um, for instance through drug taking. And what they will do is they will use the media to um, show that it's something really bad and um, you know that these young people who are taking drugs are really bad and they're doing lots of negative things for society and the media will uh, translate this into uh, negative labeling and that will create public uproar and we must do something about this that puts pressures on those who can to act upon it and so for instance the marijuana the marijuana tax act which uh, was introduced to criminalize uh, the use of marijuana um, mainly because the media said that this was a big cause of crime okay then so moral panic is the the, the key thing that we're going to be looking at this week and basically it's an exaggeration an overreaction by society a group of people etc um, to a an issue uh, something happening um, this can be normally quite a small thing and it's exacerbated and made bigger because of this moral panic um, media play a massive role in this uh, Stanley Cohen talks about the idea of folk devil where the media um, label and stereotype uh, the, the, this group of people um, and it's based on the, the, the threat to um, values of society this negative spin um, you know, normally escalates and exaggerates the actual scale of the problem, uh, which may lead moral entrepreneurs to to condemn them and put pressure on people to uh, do something about it because they fear for these social social values. So then, people have to act upon these um, this condemnation. So there's normally a crackdown uh, on that particular group. So not, very rarely has a positive. Uh, outcome so it creates a self-fulfilling prophecy and so people say well you know they're, they're treating us like that we're going to act like that and it also uh, leads to deviant amplification so if for instance the the issue is drugs then we're going to set up more drugs uh, squads and police to to try and tackle drugs so they're going to find more uh, drug taking as a result of that society thinks oh my god we've got a problem with drugs we need to do more about it there's a bigger crackdown and it just spirals out of control so the most influential study on moral panic, you could say, is by Stanley Cohen in the 1970s, which is uh, Folk Devils and Moral Panics, in which he looks at the mods and rockers. Um, just to uh, remind you of the brief background of this, mods and rockers come together in 1964, Easter weekend in Clacton, have a few little scuffles, and it's basically the end of the world in the eyes of the media. Uh, Cohen believes that the uh, media play a really important role in, in what happened as a result of this. So they exaggerated and distorted what actually happened. Um, so they started using really like weird terms and such as day of terror. Uh, it was hardly a day of terror, a few scuffles. And also just making stuff up as well, such as town hall's breath. Um, well, you know, who, who says the town held its breath? You know, it was the, the newspapers presuming that that's exactly what it did. Because it, it, it's a good story, it tells a story, and people can then relate to it. They start making predictions, so like, oh, you know, when is this going to end? This is, you know, the next time they're going to come together and brighten. And before we know it, actually, yeah, it lives up to that whole prediction, but mainly because the media have, have foreseen what was going to happen. But it wasn't probably going to happen in the first place. Um. Probably the most significant thing is the symbolization aspect of it, where the, these people are labeled negatively um, and th everyday things are attached to them. So the media start commenting on how they dress and how they look. So leather jackets, dapper suits, skinny ties, um, Doc Martens, etc. etc. So that people who are in Newcastle and Manchester are wearing Doc Martens and skinny jeans and a leather jacket and long hair is suddenly a rocker and suddenly going to kick off. Uh, well, that's not necessarily the case, is it? Media has a major impact on how the, these problems spread, and this idea of deviant amplification is 
is um, definitely a, a product of the media. Um, these youths are further marginalised away from you know society by the the courts and, and how they handle um, these people is a result of the media. So the media create this idea that they, they have to be uh, dealt with and condemned and the courts need to be seen that they're doing something about it in the eyes of the, the public so they deal with them quite heavy handedly. As a result of this though, the, the police have to then act upon what the courts are doing and they're very much influenced by the courts and the label placed on these people by the courts is, is picked up and stereo the stereotyped ideas by the police um, come from people like the courts and the media. It increases participation. Suddenly people start thinking, well, I dress like that, I'm a mod, I believe in what they're going for. So they actually get involved in it. And the self-fulfilling prophecy, so that if we're assigned these rules, we're going to live up to these rules. So it actually creates and exacerbates the, the, the situation and problem even further by criminalising these people for something that isn't really a criminal or even a deviant act, to be honest with you. Um, the media role in reporting this is very, very crucial. Um, how else would you get the information from? So these people uh, up and down the country would only ever hear about this through the media. They're not formulating their own ideas because they're not seeing it happen themselves. So they, they believe what they read in the paper is the truth. Think about this from a modern day perspective. Social media has a major impact in, in what we understand to be happening around us. So we know what's happening in Ferguson and New York through social media and through the news, but how do we know that what is actually happening is actually correct? We have to take their word for it. And there is a manipulation aspect to it there as well because you know no one wants to be reporting a boring story, so to speak. Cohen looks at this at the wider context of society as a whole and says that these moral panics normally happen when people are feeling anxious about social change and, and changes happening in society uh, which is different to what they believe is right or what they were brought up in. So in the 60s and 70s when we've got this idea of free love and people were pushing boundaries of behaviour and what they could do and what they couldn't do, um, people who grew up during the war and just after the war found it difficult because they had like uh, older values and um, you know they didn't have as much money as uh, in this affluent uh, time so it was difficult for them to really uh, understand what was happening and felt a bit anxious about it. Functionalists believe that the, these moral panics are a response to uh, anime of social change so because we didn't have a collective value then the media had a great role to play in trying to uh, restore a social um, collective value and this is um, through a fear, I suppose, a, a panic of, of these social changes. Uh, Hall um, carried out a study in 1979 looking at um, moral panic and very much a, from a Marxist perspective in that um, these moral panics in the media um, help to us to distract away from um, a capitalist uh, society. Bear in mind, you know who who the media might be working for on behalf of, and these distract away from what's going on in society and this social inequality. Uh, he looked at um, these muggings that were going on and being reported in the 1970s in the British media, and very much distracted against uh, the problems that were being cre created in his eyes by the bourgeoisie. And also it helped divide uh, working classes, so there was no longer just a class between the, the ruling class and the proletariat, but also within racial grounds and with also uh, within different areas. There's obviously criticisms of moral panic. Um, there's an assumption that there's always an overreaction, but what is an overreaction? There's no fixed line of what is normal and then what is like a bad thing. So. You know, your reaction to something I may think is an overreaction, but you may think it is it is uh, very rational. And that links in with the light, left realist idea that fear is a rational thing, but it's also uh, in the kind of eyes of the beholder. It's a very in individual and personal thing. It doesn't really talk about who is in control of uh, these amplifiers. What makes the media able to create something into a panic? Um, but not everything. So they're very selective uh, in, in what they do and in what they choose to uh, report on. And also, why do these panics not just continuously grow and get bigger and bigger and bigger and bigger and bigger and bigger? Why is there an end to it? 
Well, the main reason to that is that the media stop reporting on it, or we become, as Macrobie and Thornton talk about, desensitised. That's the issue with modern media. Um, we see things a lot on the news now, and the media is more prevalent than ever before, especially when you think about social media and things like that. But we've become desensitised, and our norms have changed, so deviance has changed, and what is deviant has changed. So we don't necessarily have moral panics anymore now because of a number of reasons. But does that mean that we are more accepting of these things happening? Perhaps it is. Um, have a look at the tasks I'm asking you to do on the blog. For the Friday group, it's very important that you are able to do those tasks because we don't have the class uh, because of the uh, end of term. Uh, if I don't see you beforehand, though, have a really good Christmas, New Year. Um, eat loads of mince pies if you're over 18 have a drink if you're under 18 don't have a drink have a look at your uh, sociology books there will be a mock exam second week back after Christmas bye bye